Sticks and Hacks, thanks for joining me again at the happiest place on turf for the back nine. If you missed the front nine, go back and watch it, but I shot four over, and so we're trying to recover a little bit and turn what was a mediocre round into a good round. The tenth hole is a short par four. You got bunkers on the right and trees on the left, so I'm hitting just a three wood here to take some of the trouble out of play and just draw it to the middle of the fairway. That's a good strike, nice draw right back to the middle of the fairway, good execution and a good start to this back nine. You can see from the scorecard heat map in par golf that that was a good drive for me. 242 yards with a three wood. That leaves just about 140 yards into the screen. The green's pretty straightforward. You got a bunker left, but it's not really in play where that pin is. So I'm just aiming a little bit right at the pin, hitting a pitching wedge. That's a pretty good swing. Didn't quite draw as much as I expected, but I've left myself just about 15 feet for birdie. Pretty good result. All right, 15 feet for birdie. This, this putt's gonna break right to left a significant amount. Need to get it a good foot outside the right. Let it die back into the hole. Let's get this back nine started right. That was a pretty good putt. Obviously, I left that short and I wasn't too happy about it. I'm letting the front nine affect my attitude a little bit still, trying to turn this around. New feature for this vlog is the scorecard heat map that you see in the bottom right from Par Golf. You can see that I hit a good drive, a good approach shot, an average putt, which led to overall a good hole being green. Those colors will change depending on the quality of the shots as I play throughout each hole. I like to use the scorecard heat map to really know which components of my game contributed to the score on the hole, either good or bad. And you can use the same if you use par golf to track your play. Let me know in the comments if you like this feature. Four holes in and I'm still four over par. So after starting four over through four, I've leveled off and I'm starting to play some solid golf, or at least it's starting to get a little bit easier. Time to turn it on and see if we can make a few birdies on this back nine and turn an average round into a good one. The 11th hole is a medium length par five, pretty straight away, just a bunker on the left, so it's driver all day. I will say that at the Palms course at Disney, almost none of the holes offer you more than 60 yards wide in your landing area, so you do have to stay on your toes with every tee shot that you hit, but this is straight away. And finally, smoked one right down the middle. Good strike, good drive. We're in good position to hit this green in two. The fairways in Florida here are also softer, so the ball's not quite rolling out as far. You ever get so excited to hit a par five and two, or wait too long to hit a par five and two, step up to the ball and just stone cold top it? Yeah, me neither. Now when you do hit a bad shot, it's important to look cool. So we'll take it to the top and here's what you can learn from a scratch golfer. When you make a bad swing, do a controlled drop, anticipate it so you can get the catch, club twirl, walk off. That's how it's done, folks. All right, so basically I laid up unintentionally and laid up into the rough, so I've left myself a little over 150 yards into this green. I'm expecting a little bit of a flyer, so it's just a wedge. What's important here is to get it to the right of the target in the middle of the green, so that at worst I two putt for my par and minimize the damage. What you can't do is smother the wedge over the green. And now you see that I've hit a good drive and I've hit two bad approach shots, so approach is a bright glaring red. I've dug myself in a hole that the short game's got to dig me out of. Luckily, this shot isn't too difficult, just over the green. Just got to pitch it on and let it run up to the hole. Should be a relatively straightforward short shot. Now, I can tell you after hitting that chip that I'm frustrated with it. From a strokes gain perspective, though, that wasn't a bad chip. I've left myself 10 feet and a good chance to save par. So rather than getting frustrated that I didn't hit it closer, you got to step up and put a good stroke on it. And just like that, I've saved par. So on the whole, good drive, really poor approach. Okay, short game, great putt, and I'm still losing strokes to the field on a par five. That's okay. You gotta take the good with the bad. I could have made that worse and let it get to me and made bogey. Instead, I've made a solid par and can live to fight another day. 
The 12th hole is a short par 3. It's only about 125 yards to cover those bunkers and get to the fat of the green. So I'm just hitting a little gap wedge here. Aim into the right of the hole. Middle of the green's okay. Let's get a birdie putt. And I was not focused. I was distracted by what was going on behind me. Caught that a little heavy. And I did make the green, but not my best shot. Sometimes when you're playing around, you just need somebody to open the can and the birdies start raining. 20 feet for birdie. Big slider, big downhill down grain at the end. Start it out to the right, watch it die in the hole. Or slam it in the back. Couldn't let you get away with the skin. First birdie of the day turned a mediocre wedge shot into a birdie with a great putt. Prefer that over the scenic route. The 13th hole is a really short par four. In fact, it's drivable, only about 280 yards to the middle of the green. The challenge is it dog legs right, and it's all carry over water if you're trying to hit a draw. This is not a shot that fits my eye. It's not a shot I should be going for. I've just made birdie, and I'm making a very poor decision here. It's all water carry for me to get there, and I've been blocking everything to the right. So you see that I was committed to that shot. I was trying to hit it at the green. I was committed. I didn't bail out, but that doesn't mean it was the right play. Just because I was committed to it doesn't mean it was a good decision. I was committed to a bad decision. I only missed the green by 10 yards, and it's a terrible shot. If you are selecting a target that allows you to hit a terrible shot when you only miss your target by like 10 yards, especially off the tee, then you're probably choosing a poor target. And that was the case here. I nuked that straight into the water, and now I'm in trouble trying to scramble for bogey. Normally I would have had to re-tee there, but being a friendly family round of golf, I decided to drop up by my dad and play from there, but made a mental note that that was a poor decision. Dog leg right, I should not be cut in the corner with my shot shape. Nonetheless, I've got 90 yards in with a wedge, pretty simple shot. And that's on the green with a putt for my fake par. You can beat me up in the comments for breaking the rules of golf here. I don't do that often, but in this case, I took that liberty. So I've got 11 feet for my fake par. Fairly big breaking putt. It's slow and it's uphill. And that was a poor stroke, so getting what I deserve to some extent. I've made a mess of this hole, so mentally I'm just done. And it is what it is. Poor drive, poor putt, just an ugly hole altogether ready to put that one behind me. The 14th hole is interesting. It's a par five on the card, but it's a forced layup. To cover all of the water is close to 300 yards. So this is just the hybrid aiming left in the middle of the fairway, playing it basically like a long par four. And that was a little bit smothered. Honestly, I don't love hybrids. I uh, will probably take that out of my bag and replace it with a driving iron, but at least it's in play. So I went through the fairway into the rough on the left and I'm hitting that same hybrid again with about 210 yards into this green, aiming over that bunker and hoping to draw it in. And that's a pretty good shot. I covered that bunker landed on the front of the green, but scooted all the way past into the rough on the backside, leaving myself a relatively easy chip down the hill. So hitting out of the rough, this is just a stock bump and run, land it kind of towards the fringe of the green and let it trickle down to the hole. Give yourself a nice little tap in birdie. Hit my spot. Almost hold it, but so, from a strokes gain perspective, that was an okay drive, hitting hybrid, that was an okay approach because I did miss the green, but a great short shot, good putt, overall a good hole, easy birdie. And we call that a birdie sandwich, but the good kind of birdie sandwich where the birdies are the bread. 
The 15th hole is a short par 4. You've got bunkers left that make the fairway a little bit tight, but this is one of the few holes on the Palms course where there really is more than 60 yards available to you. So just aim right at the bunkers and smash it. Which is what I did. One of my longer drives of the day in Florida, so 290 yards in the middle of the fairway. That's a green drive. And that leaves just a wedge into the hole. So here I'm hitting my weaker gap wedge, my 52 degree. Aiming at the middle of the hole. I've got myself psyched up. I've made two birdies in three holes. It's time to fire away. And I caught that heavy. So it's on the green, but that was one of my poorer approach shots of the day. Not exactly stoked with it. Nonetheless, it's a putt from about 22 feet. I have been putting well, particularly here on this back nine. But either that was a bad read or a poor strike because that was right and always right and never came back to the hole. Luckily the pace was pretty good, so easy tap in par. And you won't hear me dog cuss, easy tap in par. Good drive, so. okay wedge, good putt, good hole, that's a par. The 16th hole is a nice little par three, big carry over water, playing a little over 170 yards, so I'm hitting seven iron into this green. This is one where you aim a little bit to the right hand side in case it draws, but anything on the green is a good shot. That's a good strike, drawing a little more maybe than I wanted, but it's in a good spot on the green with a putt for birdie. Good shot. So here I've got just 22 feet for birdie. Should break a little from my left to right. And pace was perfect, but a little bit on the low side. Under red that one. I'm a fan of easy threes, and that's an easy three. Good approach shot, good putt, good hole. Moving on to the 17th, which is a short par four, but it does dogleg right. And so you almost want to hit it over those trees on the right hand side to get it back into the fairway. Otherwise, if you aimed straight away, you'd be taking less club or risking running through the fairway. So I'm aiming at some palms off in the distance, trying to cut the corner with a good drive. That was a good rip. Right through the corner, gets right through the palms, right into the middle of the fairway. I didn't see it down, but it's where I wanted it. Which leaves me just a little flip wedge in. So from about 50 yards, I've got a 56 degree. These shots are tough because there's not a whole lot of green. You gotta cover the bunker and then sit down pretty quick. Mediocre. And I'm disappointed with that, but again, that's just poor perception because from a strokes gain perspective I've left myself in a good spot just 20 feet from the hole and I give that one a better run but again under reddit low and left nonetheless it is a tap in par and I continue to turn this poor round into a decent one still only three over par with an asterisk through 17 holes the 18th hole is a longer par four. You got a bunker on the left, but you do have enough room to hit driver and it being a long hole drivers to play. So just aim down the right hand side of the fairway and smash it. Which is what I've done here. 270 yards just inside the bunker. Leave myself about a little under 180 yards into the green. I'm choosing six iron here because it is into the wind. You got bunkers to the right that I'm trying to avoid. The miss is short and left if you do miss, but trying to get anything on the green, finish out this round. See, I'm aimed a little bit right at the flag knowing that the ball's gonna draw. I didn't love that strike. I wasn't fully committed probably and rocked out a little bit and caught it on the toe. Probably felt like I had a little bit too much club. Even then, from a strokes gain perspective, it's a good shot. I got to the front of the green. Um. Even leaving myself 36 feet, that's a good shot. Keep hitting greens. Big uphill curling putt that's gonna go from my left to right. Just lag it up there. 
It's not a time to be cute. Another one that I underread. That was one of the tougher putts I had on the day. It broke quite a bit. But a tap in par. And that's a good day on the links on vacation. So good hole there, good drive, good approach. Uh, all in all, I turned what could have been a disastrous score into a decent one, again with the asterisks, but uh, 75, I'm fairly happy with that. Two birdies on the back nine after none on the front nine. I hit almost every fairway on the back and hit, turned almost that into a decent of round of golf uh, and had a great time out there at Disney. Highly recommend it. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Join me on this journey. Let me know in the comments what you like and don't like and what you want to see more of. And we'll see you next time at the Good Miss.